Have you ever been chipping away at a painting only to be met by frustration at every corner? You stare at it. It's not terrible, but it's not great either. And there's just some things that are off about it. You know deep down it hasn't reached its full potential. Well, in this week's Three Minute Thursday, we are going to talk about how to make your painting read the best that it can. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to another Three Minute Thursday. And welcome to my channel, the go-to place for digital and fine artists of all levels who want to build confidence in their landscape painting with the proper fundamentals. In today's video, we are going to be tackling the conundrum of why your painting may not be reading well. Now the reason your painting might not be reading the best it can might not be attributed to only one reason, but maybe a couple or a few problems happening at the same time. The trick is to be able to determine those problems fast and learn how to tackle them efficiently before throwing in the towel too quickly and giving up. Now, because we only have three minutes, I'm gonna be talking about the three most common problems that occur when I am painting, and also some common problems that I see in students' work. So let's put on the timer for three minutes and get started. You may have heard the phrase, color gets all the credit, but value does all the work. And it is so true. The real test to see if your painting is successful is to strip out all the color and see if your painting still reads in grayscale. Now, if you don't believe me, take it from Andrew Loomis, who states in his book, Creative Illustration, if your painting is bad in color, it is not the fault of the color, but of the values and relationship of color to the light or shadow. In summary, it means that your color can't be right until the value of that color is right. The most common mistake I see is when an artist hasn't taken the time to properly group their light and shadow shapes together. They over-render the form and over-complicate the range of values, thus making the painting unreadable. Now, one tempting trick to do when your painting isn't reading is to finesse and pick with color. When the problem isn't that, it lies more fundamentally with design. By design, I'm referring to the way you choose to arrange your lines, values, shapes, color notes, and edges to create a clear and intentional composition that tells an engaging story. Sometimes it's easy to think that by throwing more and more stuff into your painting, like adding more texture, more brushstrokes, or more random shapes, will somehow add visual depth to your painting, or maybe hide your insecurity so that no one will know what you struggled with. But I beg to differ. I think it's important to ask yourself when critiquing your painting, does my painting have a balance between simplicity and complexity? Or is my design simply too cluttered? This could mean that you have too many competing shapes or too many brushstrokes of the wrong value suffocating your painting. A simple but effective design is always better than an overly and unnecessary complicated design. A lot of the times when my painting is reading meh, and it's lacking a punch and lacking intent, I realized that it's because I haven't taken the time to guide my viewer's eye on a visual journey within my piece. Have you taken the time to design your painting with a focal point, or are you just carelessly slapping on brush strokes, hoping a decent painting will somehow result? I hope it's the first. Now maybe you're wondering, how do I create a focal point? 
Well, usually in my paintings, I like to design my focal point with slightly higher value contrast so that your eye will be drawn to that area. And maybe add tasteful pops of more saturated color in select areas compared to the rest of my painting. Now that's just a technique that I might use, but there's no one way to create a focal point. An exercise that I suggest is to do value and color studies of the fine art masters that you love to analyze how they thoughtfully design their own paintings with ingenious value, shape, and color relationships. Asking yourself questions like, why my eye is being drawn to that area of interest will bring you one step closer to solving those kinds of questions in your own paintings. We are going to look at two absolutely stunning paintings by William Rischel and see how he ingeniously designed the paintings with a clear story and focal point. I actually saw both of these paintings in person at the Irvine Museum in 2018 and they shook me to my core. In the first painting, which I unfortunately couldn't find the name of, Rischel manages to capture the ethereal, iridescent glow of the light hitting the water through his simple but bold composition, arrangement of light and dark shapes, as well as his play of contrast in value, texture, shapes, and edges. The dark masses of the rocks on the sides lead you into the painting and keep you focused on the center where the area of interest is. The area of rest at the top of the painting perfectly contrasts with the dappled lighting dancing on the water right in the center. The center is also where the area of highest contrast is, so your eye can't help but go there. Up close, you can see just how well Rischel designed every light shape, even down to the dot. Every shape is so unique and specific, and that is how he captures the delicate movement of the light reflections. In the second painting, Boats Returning Home, the composition is also quite simple but so well designed. The direction of the strokes in the water in the foreground guide our eye into the painting. It is a force pulling us in. Rischel also employs every color you would not associate with water into the water. Oranges, pinks, teals, yellows, greens, you name it. All that rich hue variety juxtaposes with those beautiful neutral grays on the top of the painting, and that balance and contrast and saturation and neutral grays is what makes this painting so stunning. Up close, you can also see the use of texture, using more paint and harder edges to emphasize the movement of water near the focal point of the boats traversing the wide expanse of the sea and disappearing into the distance. Notice also the delicate strokes and dots of bright cadmium red on the boats. That pop of saturation is a beautiful addition to bring out those boats a bit more. Up top, Rischel uses more soft edges to capture the fog and create the feeling of a dreamy, calm, but perhaps also uncertain atmosphere. The boats are simple but instantly readable silhouettes and arranged very deliberately to guide your eye around the painting. Both paintings take me away on a visual and emotional journey. I completely melt and get lost in them. I hope you do too. Now three minutes is up, but I want to share an extra bonus with you and share three tips that will help you create a more readable painting. Now my first tip is my most favorite tip and also the easiest to do. And that is to step away from your painting and squint at it from time to time, regardless if it is a physical or digital painting. 
What this does is that it saves you a lot of heartache at the end when you think your painting's done, only to look at it and realize that your relationships of value and color aren't really working like you thought it was. I always judge my painting from how it looks from far away, not when it's up close, because it's harder for me to see those mistakes when I'm just looking at it for long periods of time without getting distance from my painting. Now my second tool requires you to go on Photoshop, and this tool is great for helping you simplify your value structure in your own painting or in a reference image, and will also help you see if your painting is reading well in terms of design and value. This tool is called the Median Tool. So if you go on Photoshop and go to Filter, Noise, and then Median, and you toggle the meter from between three and 10, depending on how blurry you want it, this tool will blur your image, essentially how you would see it if you had bad eyesight. Now what this does is that it simplifies the value and design of your painting and lets you see the big, important shapes that you need to hold onto. Now my third tip that I wanna share with you is a really fast way to turn your paintings into grayscale on Photoshop so that you can check if your values are working instantly. If you go to View, Proof Setup, Custom, and under Device to Simulate, look for Dot Gain 20%. Your painting will turn most accurately black and white. And if I press Command Y on Mac, or Control y on Windows, I believe, you can toggle back and forth between grayscale and color and turn your painting black and white and check your values at any time. Now at this point in the video, you've learned not three, but six tips that you can use to make your painting read better. And I've taken away some actionable steps that you can employ to create a painting that is not only beautiful, but communicates clearly in design and color. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button below, and don't forget to check out my other videos that I have on digital and gouache painting here. Thank you so much for tuning in to another 3 Minute Thursday, and I'll catch you in the next one.